Hello and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So today I'm going to look at a slightly different project. So this is going to buy me and Ben just a little bit. We're going to make a mission style clock. So this is something I've been online, looked at. So from there what do you do? Got to draw things out. And this is one of these questions we kind of get occasionally. How do you get ideas where? Sit down, you play with your phone, maybe with a computer. And then from there you start to sketch something out. And then we go get an idea of sizes. So traditionally when I did stuff, have to draw it up. If I can draw it full size, even better. So I make a hard copy, All right? So therefore my hard copy in this case is on a piece of MDF. It's really good. Actually this side we've got the umbrella holder we did the other week. So again, if we did draw that up. We've got our mission clock on here. We'll try and get you in a minute. You can have a little bit of a look. Maybe there will be drawings hopefully to go with this. I don't know, we'll find out. There should be something online. All right, so we've got our sketch on here. It gives me something to work off. So there's that scenario of, yes, you've got to do a little bit of work. That's that whole thing that you all kind of, where do you suddenly get that drawing from? We work at it. Sketch it out, work out where things are going, try and solve those problems as you go on. So first thing I did, I've spent a bit of time to draw this out. I've then machined the wood up, which we've got down on here. We'll get you in in a minute and have a look. So smoke. Machined it up, ready to go. So we planned that down to the sizes we've worked out on that drawing. All right, so let's get you in a little bit nearer and have a look. So our wood in here, what we really want at the moment is those. This is gonna be, if you like, the shelf sections in between. This is the bottom rail. We don't need that yet. Other things we've got for our clock down on here, a bit of brass sheet we use later. We have simple clock movement. All right, so that's all we're gonna use. On here, this is actually going to be the uprights, the main outsides of our clock. So therefore, I've got to figure out what I want as top and bottom. Now I've also done a little bit of work on this just to save us some time. I've marked bits out on this as in the positions of where things are going to go. Always tricky trying to mark it out for the guys when we're at home on the camera. I've used marking gauge, pencil, I've tried to highlight things a little bit on here. So if I bring in our shelf for the top, that gives me my bottom point. I actually want to cut out this section here. This is going to be our middle one, going to be in here. Our bottom shelf is made up of those components, so we have board and a bit that goes across. All right, so that's going to be glued together when we've done the hard work of making that. Okay, so we've already started looking out, so all those little lines and everything I've marked out is relevant off of that main drawing. All right, and it's difficult I know with the cameras trying to see things, but that gives you the scope of where things are. One, two, three down the bottom here. With that, I've marked out, I've got a plan of where we want to do. Now, these are gonna be jointed traditionally, something like a mortise and tenon, so I've got to join that together. This is obviously too long at the moment, so we're going to join these in. So how to cut the mortises? What can we do? Some of you might have a domino. Yeah, you could get away with that. It's quick and simple. I'm going to do traditional mortise and tenon. Now, if we do a traditional mortise, difficult to do on a machine, you're working front to back. It's not impossible. Now, most of us, we could hand cut them. But I'm pretty sure lots of you will have something as a small handheld router. So we're gonna go with a simple handheld router, straight cutter, we're gonna cut those mortises and then we can do the tannins after. So we're gonna set up to do those mortises. All right, so having got our bits of oak, we've marked out those joints, like I said, in reality I've marked them with pencil. Um, it's hard work trying to cut into the oak and also the fact you're getting the mistakes, it's difficult to get rid of it. So pencil lines, as long as you've got a sharp pencil, accurate square, Good to do, all right? Other major thing when I cut them to length, I've made sure the ends are nice and square. That is paramount what we're gonna do. Any discrepancies when we start now, we'll repeat all the way through what we're gonna do on the project. So get those cut square, quite important. We've cut them to length, we've machined them up nice and square, we've done all the marking out. So how are we actually gonna cut the, the mortise? Well, we kind of said we can use hand router, so straight cutter, this is 10 mil diameter. We can use a guide bush. 
relatively basic things. So we're going to make some way of actually making it repeatable. Now the other thing I've just said, repeatable, you could batch run this as a project. So you might want to make one at the moment, you might want to make 20 down the line. So if we make the jig now to, to actually hold this, fix it in place, cut them, we'll take them out, we'll do as many as you like. So the more accurate you make that jig, the better. So, got the supplies for my jig a little bit. Got some pine button. And this is a project kind of thing, it's a weird thing, which we often get people emailing and say, can you make a, a jig for routing to do what? So now we've got the challenge. We're gonna do something as a real simple little routing jig. We're gonna build it as we go. So we've got our pine buttons, our bit of oak in between. I've then cut two bits of pine, go into there. All right, so we'll get that all the way around it. We can border it, all right? We've got our, our bit of oak position-wise. We've got top, I've got to look carefully, is up here. Now we're gonna make something around this to actually make everything repeatable. So first thing I want to do is fix this together as, as a simple way of doing. So let's have those out of the way. Got some glue. Want a little bit. Don't want much. Just going to spread it onto there. Wipe it over. And like I said, trying to get Quite thin layer. I don't want loads. I don't want it going everywhere. Other thing with the ends of the pine blocks that I've done here. Again, I've made sure everything is nice and square. Well, do the same with the other. So we spread our glue on. Those back down. Now the aim is not to glue them in to the bit of oak. I've just turned this round. We've got a funny edge on here. Let's have that out of the way. Let me turn these back over. Look, so the same size. That's better. Check things are flush. We'll put the lid back on the glue. Going to get it square on the end. movement there, so let's get that one back to the same. And just checking how things feel, trying to get things nice and flush. So we clamp that up, and let it just tack off for a couple of minutes. So what we're going to do now, just to hold these together, we can screw them up. So I'm just going to lift this, make my life easier. Just going to put it in the vise. Smaller square, just turn round. I'm going to come to there, not critical. If I put a line on there, you can see where I am. I'm looking at where the pine button is. I don't want to be right on the edge of it. I'm going to fight to get in there a little bit. The glue would have just gone a little bit, which would be good. Just going to drill pilot hole down through. Screw it together. Clamp back just a little bit. Look at where my pine is again, so I can see them nicely in there. Uh, 
Then I'm going to repeat it for the other side. Top. Bottom. All right. Just highlight what's going on there. So how do I know that's the top and the bottom? The top is here, lower one is set up. Just thinking about which way the wood's going in. If I label it now, I've got a clear indication. Now I've also been and cut some bits of MDF. These we're going to use to create our barrage to come across. We've also got to think about an offset we have. So we're going to use a guide bush and a cutter. I have a 14 mil guide bush, a 10 mil cutter, okay? So therefore, we have a distance of four mil difference. So the cutter, first of all, it needs to fit down through the middle of the guide bush. That's important to check. So 10 mil, 14, four mil difference. That's two mil either side, all right, if you centralize your cutter. Some advice, all I'm gonna use is something, a couple of spacers. So a bit of cherry, this is nine, 10 mil thick. Doesn't have to be anything specific. I just want that there for a minute. This will all make good sense in a second. Just going to slide this over. I want to bring my little bit of oak up, a bit of cherry up to there. Just going to tighten that up. Check there's no dust. I'm checking now the cherry is below the surface. So this end we're a bit near. Come down just a tiny bit. What's that allowing me? Basically giving me a position where my boards will go, but something to run along to keep it nice and square. Keep it parallel. What I don't want is these starting to wiggle off. So our bits of MDF, we're gonna have these on. I wanna make sure they're nice and square down through that edge. I might even pull that up with a clamp in a minute. But the corner edge here has gotta be square. So, best way I can get that really square. And it seems criminal, doesn't it? Shooting board and a bit of MDF, but we can put that on. So this now is giving me a dead square corner in here. That's so important. I don't want anything as any movement so I can line up against my edges, okay? First bit done. A little bit tricky now. The first one's the one that's gonna take some time. I've numbered these so I know what order they've gotta go in because I've gotta work out the whips. So the first one becomes a stop point. I want a two mil offset. What have you got this two mil that you could use? Well, actually, if you start measuring something like your rulers, they're mil thick. So we can put this in here, and I can come up to where my joint line is, which is 10. And carefully lay it on. I can try and get that lined up with my pencil line nice and accurately. A little bit tricky. We can clamp it down if you need, but we need some way of lining that up. Um, so I can't see it. I get too much. I get too much shadow. Okay. All right. Good news is we're going to. Yeah. Okay. So right. So we've got that lined up. This stage, I'm pulling back against the bit of oak onto there. Let's just put. One screw on there. You can see I've drilled this and counter sunk it. Not going to go all the way to start with, just want to have a quick look, check nothing's moved. This is giving you the idea of you've got to be nice and accurate for this. Just to hold everything really in place now, I'm just going to clamp either end. Means it's not sliding around, it's sliding all around the bench. We've got nicely fixed. I can check the position of that first one's so important. That looks good. So we're nice and accurate on there. We're screwed down. Double check things are square. This is the start block. So if it's not right, things are skewed off. Everything else down the line will follow. So 
So we've offset this two mil off of where our mortise hole wants to be. That's important, okay? Only two mil, not four. Now, I've also been and cut carefully so bits of MDF, same material, to that 14 mil width to match that guide bush. So when I've cut these, I've measured them with a vernier, check they feel right. Oh, to give you the scope of how you can do that, I get people saying, how are you going to do that? So, sickly so I can measure it, check it on here. I want a tiny little bit of wiggle, all right? And there isn't a lot on there, so I can double check that things match. Nice to be, needs to be nice and clean as well as a saw cut. So this is circular saw, not bad saw. If you go circular saw, I hope you'll get a better finish. Every little lump and bump you put down here, we're going to transmit our spacer. Now a board number two, I've got to drill the holes. That comes into there. Now I've already worked out the distance I need from that. And I forgot my pencil. I can measure this, go with a nice clear ruler. I've got oh, 113 from what I can see there to where my mortise hole is. We want to be two mil short. So this is 111. All right. So we're taking two mil off. So if we put that in, we are now the width of our two rulers. Off of that joint. So we're just pushing over that little bit. So using that ruler can be a good double check just on where we are. So we're slightly short. So when we use the guide bush, it will centralize it. So it's that working out that little bit of offset and the ruler way can be a good way around that. So at this point, we know that our guide bush will fit into here and we can move it along. But we don't want to come all the way off the end. So we now need to make stop points Either end, start stop points. Now I've got my pencil lines, I can say I'm 10 mil as a stop point from the edge of our bit of oak. So in reality, we want to stop 10 mil in. So if I measure, and I've got to do this side, they should be the same, hopefully. Go to there so I can see it a bit better. I've got 60, but we need that two mil again. So we've got to take two mil off the end of this, so we want 58, okay? So we're coming over, we've got the offset, so that'll bring us out by that two. Let's have a quick look on this one. They look pretty good, pretty equal. So I've got an equal space either side, which is good. So I'm going to go and cut one, two, three, four. Just the four at the moment. These ones are different. We'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to go cut four of these to 58 mil. Then we'll come back, we'll fix them in. So we've got our little blocks we cut to 58. So we're going to drop it in. I've got to pull it right back. Just chucking a foot. Mr. Screen. Now we can line up between, we know where our back mark is. So four mil looking spare. <sighs> Keep the dust out of the way. I'm now pulling back my fingertip. Fix it down. So this side we're using that oak board. Keep everything repeatable. <sighs> can do the same. Put it in, if it's nice and firm, that's good. Pulled it back, we can see position. To make sure we got that width right, we've got 100. We set the tenons in either end, or the mortise in either side, 20 mil, 10 mil either side. We've also got the offset of four. So we actually need Magic number of 76 of that. So, put that in there. I can check it and measure it. Okay, we're good. We can fix. Let's have a look. I'm trying to get this nice and flush here. Good one with this side. If I need to, once I do a practice bit, we can see where things are. We can wiggle things about.
So we're going to set the router up. So we have 10 mil straight cutter. Need to load that. We need to come up two thirds of that shank. There is a K line on here. The higher up I can be, the better. We're not hitting where it joins the cutter face though, because that's slightly curved. That'll do. We're going to load the guide bush. So, got to undo. Got to screw on there. Little screw on there. So that's clean. So at this point, obviously the router not plugged in. Let's load our bit of wood again. So we have top base onto there. Going to set up the cutter. We know the guide bush now will line into there. We've got a wave going forward and back. Going to bring this down now. If I undo the dap stop, going to bring this right up going to take the cutter down through our slot down to the oak board just going to lock off the height from there I can set how much depth I want there so if I bring this down to zero undo it I want to check that this scale thing the extended float is on zero and we're touching the bottom what I undo here whatever distance I put in here is how deep we're going to go with our mortars. Now, having checked my drawing, I want to be 12 mil. Pin it up. So we've slid this up to 12 mil. Okay, so we're on boards. We're ready to almost do the routing now. We set the router up. I've got top, top, inside, inside. Only one's got the drawing lines on. The other can be as long as I hope we get right. So we'll drop this on. We know we've got the top up on here. Bring it back a little bit. Oh, so that fits nice and securely inside. I'm going to hold it down on the bench. So we could actually fix a couple of buttons on here. Now the board in underneath, the oak board we slid in, is slightly thicker than my pine button. And that's deliberate actually because I can use this now just to make sure that once it is clamped down, it's pushing it up against the MDF on the jig. So everything's come up nicely now, fixed in place, changed the glasses, safety glasses, going to want some earmuffs, put them on, going to want our router with the extractor, gently coming up. First stage on this we're just going to do a number of repeat cuts going across, up and down, and then we can clean it out. Clean out time. So we need to clean the dust out because it bungs up either end of the holes. So you
So having done all the routing, we'll just set this up. We've got something as a straight edge. Just really want to square the corners up. So I'm going with a little 6mm chisel. Just going to pare down. Square that one up. Just dripping off the side. I've got a guy where my pencil line is there. So I know I'll go to there. Other side, just going to come over. I'm trying to take all of it in one heavy go. Slice down. Square up the end. And if I turn it round, do the other side. We're going to do all the joints on these just to square up those corner ends. Right, so we've routed the slots, cleaned the corners up. So you've got to get them square. The, no such thing as a square round router cutter, I wish. So clean them up. How deep are they? So we said when we set the router about 12 mil, but let's be accurate. So we've got 11 and a half, right? So that's not bad. Let's call it 11. Nice round number. Back to the drawing because I need to measure the width of the front panel, the width of where the clock faces are to get that well length. So we've got 120 plus 11 and 11, 142. So, my next task is going to cut our rails. This is bottom one, uh, on top, to 142 long. So I'll go cut those. So all I'm going to do is just use the miter saw. Nothing exciting really to watch. So I can set, that, set up a lump stop, cut them, get them nice and square. Then we'll come back, then we're going to fit them. So we cut the bits to length, all right? So we now we'll make them fit. Okay, so we're going to route the tannins on. We can do a little bit either side. That one should fit flush. This one will fit flush. Middle one we've got to do a bit either side. So I need to go get the router table. So, won't be a sec. There you go. Well, you were thinking something bigger. We're going to route each of the rails for this. Got to take a little bit off. We've already got the cutter. We'll zoom in a minute. I've loaded the cutter, save us a bit of time. We've set it up to 11 millimetres from the front edge of the cutter to the face edge of the fence. So overhang from fence to front edge is 11 mil. I've done a couple of play bits just to see, all right, quite easy to do. So actually we're a little bit shorter than the depth of our mortise, which is good, okay? So we're gonna get you in. We have a look at that milling cutter. Why have I got a small milling cutter? It's nice, small, not too long. It's not gonna vibrate too much. We're using Air dried English oak, it's hard stuff. So shorter cutter, less vibration will be good. The first one, I've done a light cut all the way round. Okay, this is the middle rail that fits centre, so we've got it all the way. This is scribing those fibres to create a nice shoulder. If we do a heavy, big cut, more like to tear back beyond the fibres, chip the surface grain out, which is going to show. So it'd be nice to give it a nice, clean cut at this stage. So I've gone all the way round on that one. The top rail, let's just grab that back in. We've only got to do three sides. We don't want to do the face or the bottom edge, because that fish slush. Okay, so we're going to do the same with that. And then gradually, all we're going to do is bring the cutter up, get them to fit. So we've done a small one, we've skimmed it. Now this is going to be the first one out, it's slightly thinner in thickness. So what I want to know now, we've got our board, look. We can try any of the slots, we're going to go down to the bottom really, because this is the one it's got to fit into. Need to make sure it fits in that gap. All right, so that will fit in nicely. I've got a little bit of work just to clean up on the ends. Just fraction over, so I might need to widen that just a little tad. We can do that with a hand chisel, that'll work. But that at the moment will fit in nice and tight, which is what we want. So first one done, we've got to do exactly the same with the other two bits now. We're going to gradually machine them to get them to fit in there. Right, so having done all the routing, I've put it together. No glue, just dry. We're going to put it together a few times like this. So I've used some quick action one-handed clamps to get to there. Now I need to get it apart. So with it apart, you can see how we've got our joints squared up the ends, everything. Make sure things fit half on here. 
both sides, half on the bottom one, okay? We want this end. So I've got to fit the rail into there, we're going to glue that on. Alright, so let's just drop that over. We want it in there. So the height we've set this shelf up is equal to that rail, alright? Do that back up. We want to make sure that end is nice and square. I want it in there. This at the moment is just going to give us a cut off point so I can scribe a pencil line to give us our length. I can just about see it there. Let's bring it down round as well. On the far side we're using Japanese saw. So Got to do exactly the same the other side. So we fitted the rail, we've done the shooting boards, they fit together, clamp just really to hold it, not too much pressure. We now want a curve in here, nice equal curve, so we need to find something curved to draw around. So we need something as a bowl or something as a curve, look, that'll work beautifully, look. So we can go from there, lining up each side, and all I want to do, draw that on. So I'm going to cut that little bit out. The shelf that we've got should cover that. So we cut our little bits, so these have got to be glued into here at this stage. We're not glued anything else, but just onto that rail. So they're going in there. Oh, put them down. A little glue spreader. So silicone bristled or tip, just so we can dab a bit in there. Right, I'm thinking of the thickness of, if you like, that shelf. Wipe it along. Spread it out a bit. Kind of get the idea of a nice thin layer. I want to keep it flush with the underside here, so let's pick up one and that. Gonna make this look a bit fiddly, but should work. So the bit of white MDF just going on to the shelf. That's on there. I'll rub one and go onto there. They're pressed in. Just gonna bring this clamp up again in line with that shelf. That should squeeze everything up that way. And then just to get pressure onto each of our little bits. Have one on there. Have the other one on there. A bit too firm. Ooh. And take that out. We can check everything is flush and underneath. Then we need to let that dry. So, having glued up a little bit to the bottom at the moment, everything else is dry. So don't go gluing up yet. Just changing the router cutter, so we're going to do the slot and the groove all the way around that's going to hold the brass and the wooden insert in the front of this. So we're taking the milling cutter out, we're going to use a slot cutter. One of my favourite types of cutters. We went with a straight cutter, 2mm thick, 5mm deep in oak. I bet you snap it. So we can go with something like a little circular saw blade, a lot more inherent strength in that than a straight cutter. Okay, so we're going to set that up, going to use that on the small table to do the grooves. All right, so we're going to get you in a bit nearer, come and have a look. Next thing I want, let's see where we can get to. I want 25 mil, so if I undo the collar, got to come up. Set it up, lock it off. So now we're set up there, it's quite daunting like this. 
Let's just stretch. It's not our work pace. Okay. We're going to put a clamp on this in a minute. But actually, when we come to load this, we're going over there. So things will be nicely covered. We can come in. Now, we've got to look at direction of where we're going to cut round with this. All right, we've got to do one. Then we're going to do the other. Got to look at the drawing. Just check we're doing the right ones. Okay. So... We're going to cover the cutter. Can't really have any extraction with this, so yes, it might be a bit dusty, so goggles, earmuffs are really important. Dust masks might be good for this. Right, so up to there. So this stage, as we said, nothing is glued up. Now I have got this face down, just checking. I'm going to play around. We're just going to tighten everything together using a couple of clamps. All right, the reason we can't glue it yet, we haven't got the panels in, so until the panels go in, we can't really glue it up. We've got to cut the grooves for the panels to go in, which is what we're aiming to do now. But we can use a couple of clamps, squeeze things together. Oh, we've got a little ridge there we can clean up later. Now we have the front face, face down. Okay, so that's on there. Safety glasses, air muffs. Now when I put this on, I've got to check we're in the middle of the work. Hold on. We can have, if I can find my dial. A little bit more speed. So we want to change or make the cutter wider now. So we're going to take and uh, which spanner have we got? That one there. Look. I want to make this thicker. So just as a quick look, we've got to make our bit of oak or our panel go in. If I put two discs together, what do I get? Still a little bit thin. We can get over that aspect. We can move the cutter up and down. So I put disc, washer, Another disc, so we're overlapping the teeth, so they're not together. Turn around a little bit, they're facing the same way, that's paramount. Put it back on, tighten it back up. So just adjusting the cutter height, lock it off. Check everything spins, so I'm checking the bearing will fit down through the table. Clutter. Now we have our thickness of a, a test bit we're going to do, so I've set up at 8 mil and then we can bring the cutter up to get our height. This is purely on the bottom bit, so down in there, not on the top section, just that lower bit. <sighs> uh, <sighs> clean off, get to there, we're going to do exactly the same as we just did. So we've adjusted the height on this, let's just bring that clamp out the way. Our own panel material, this is the thickness of the panel material we have, okay? I want to check that it will fit into there nicely, all right? Doesn't need to be dead tight. This is going to be the inset panel, so obviously going to go around. We've got to chisel a little bit out in the corners, but that will fit in all the way around. So we've got a panel. The top one's just going to have the brass. So we've got our groove in the front. Now we're also going to do something in the back to make up a way of sealing the back. I want these to lift up and down. So we can lift it up, take it out, put it back in place, so you put it high, drop it down into the lower groove, help secure it. Bottom bit, you can maybe, I don't know, secret treasure box, okay? So first thing we've got to do, try and get it apart. So we're using, for a hammer, just to get them there, rubber faced. Just gently tapping this apart for a minute. Make sure we're keeping the configuration we have. That's in there, that's good. Just about out. 
Nice to know it fits. That's good. How about that? That one there. That's the top one. That's our middle one. All right, now we've got to line these up with the way they are there. We want the backs, so I'm going to put it there, that, that, that one there. We've got the top and the underside of the shelf to do first as a group. Okay. Then we've got to do the top face of the middle one and the base. So I'm going to do the very top for a minute. So we've reset the router, we've put the fence back on, we're using the same slot cutter, the bigger one. So we can bring this up and down, fractionally to a height. We're going to come across there, so I've had to take the bubble screen off, come across. We're doing about 6mm deep on this. It's not that deep, I've still got a bearing on underneath. That's not going to make contact, we're using the fence to do the work for us on this one. Then we need to raise and lower the cutter fraction. So you could work through these as a group, do all the cuts, then actually lower them will be good. All right. So And you'll need to move the fence because we're going to do a 6mm on this one, 3mm on the upper facing shelves. All right. So the top will have a 6mm, allows the shelf or the, the back to lift up and go in, and it will drop into the shallower 3mm groove. Safety gear. So we've done all our grooves down through on the shelves and those dividers. So they're all done. Now do you bet we've used a round disc cutter. We've got stop points where we're going to need to clean up those corners so we get nice crisp square corners. When the panel goes in it will fit. Okay, so we haven't got that radius. So how are we going to do that? Back to some bench work. So we've got bench stop, there I test one on here, quick clamp down just to put it in place. This is going to stop everything moving. All right, really good. I work naturally right-handed. I can get into there. Lots of weight on that leg as well on the bench, so if you're tapping things. We've got wider group, just over six mil. That's going to take a wooden panel which Ben's going to cut out a nice intricate shape in. That's got to fit in, we've got to square the corners up. We've then got the brass one. That's a lot narrower. And that's a panic one, that was like, uh, we've got a 3 mil chisel. It's too big. And that's the snare I know lots of people, um, um, what are we going to do? You can buy carving tools. Just because they're a carving tool doesn't mean you can't use it for normal woodwork. So I've got one and a half mil little carving tool. What I want to do is crisp up that corner. It'll do that. So don't think you can't use something like a carving tool. So let's get in a bit nearer, have a bit of a look. We've got our bits on here, we need to crisp these up. I can see my line, I know we need to come just beyond it. So six mil chisel, vertical to start with. This is narrower than our groove, let's give you that. Okay, so I'm sort of in between at the moment. That creates a break line. I've got the chisel now upside down, that's limit how deep I'm going in. Then gently cutting up through the grain fibres. Back to our brake line. Down. I can pull some of those fibres out now. I want to just level up so I've gone something wider so I can rest on the internal face of the groove then slice it the way over. So back edge now is against that side. Gently pivot it. And it takes a bit more time, but it will look nicer when it's done. Just got to get into the corners again. Other side. Let's drag out. I can drag all the way down the groove as well to get rid of any fluff. We've got the other end still to do. Let's do this little one then. I've got a couple of options with there. If we can get it in, and it might be an if, you could even possibly go with a saw. Just to break that line. On here, it doesn't matter if I come through to that tenon. So I'm just going with that little carving tool. We're going down the grain. We're not clouting it massively. And the other thing I've majorly done with this, make sure it's sharp, okay? So I've deliberately been in sharp on this. 
Um, carving tools, you want to know how to sharpen. We did the twist and fix video the other week. Got to watch it right to the end. Right, little bit about how I can sharpen this is something like a wood lad. So, just checking our depth now, having a feel. It feels like, I'm going to come back a bit. Again, we're not tapping loads. Come back out. Bit right on the end here I want to get. So I'm just going to come back in. Take that out, that's good. So hopefully, we've got our squared up corner now. We've got to do the same, the other ends. These ones again, I can come up to the middle. Square up the corner here. We've also got a little bit just to nick out on the corner ends. This is the chop, so we want a little bit more off there. The chop is going to fit down in here to make sure that that comes deep enough to where that panel is going to line up. All right, so those corner points on these will need a little bit of work as well. Do the uprights first, then these. All done. We'll get you back in when I finish playing with the hand chisel then. Having chiseled the bits out, we can do a dry assemble again, just really to make sure everything goes in. So we have the base one. Got to push that in. Everything still fits nice and firm. Top one, we've got a groove. We've got the back grooves, that's in there. That's the one with the one. Turning on it, double-sided, that's got to be in here. Wider groove. Push it in. We'll check it's down. So at this stage we haven't really put it together, so let's just go on from there. Check how things look. Plastic headed mallets, a bit softer. We obviously might want something just as clamp to pull things up. Clamp can be less abusive and more controllable than clouting it with something. So top one I'm getting a little bit of a gap. Let's bring our clamp. Let's see if I can tear it up. That's better. All right, so it will go together. Everything pulls up nicely. I'm just checking the bottom joints. A little bit of spring somewhere across the middle, but that's good, okay. Haven't got it together. Got to take it apart again. That's good. So I'll take that off. We now need the panel to fit into the bottom wide groove. So I've got a bit of oak. Already got an idea how big things need to be. We've worked off our drawing. We've got our groove quite accurately cut. We know we have six mil deep. So I've got 100. Ooh, double check that. 112 plus 6 and 6 is 124. So my panel is 123 long. That's pretty good going. I like that. So next thing we want to check is how deep we are this way. So if we go into here, just going to bring that round. Slide in. I've got to turn it round. I'll turn it back to you guys in a minute. I have got 129 on there. Okay. 129, we've gone to the bottom of the groove and we've got to add six. So we need 135. Now I've got spot on 135, all right, which some of you say, great. But actually, 135 is tight. It's not allowing any movement. So I want to take a tiny bit off. So bear with me. Just going to clean up an area. going to move a few things around on the bench. Just want to clean that surface and wipe off the moisture because I don't want the shooting board sliding about. Dusty surfaces don't help. We want to come down the grain a little bit. Tiny bit. I'm going to turn my board over. The grain direction is going that way. So I'm actually cutting parallel with the grain now. All the way down through. Check there, a little bit on that corner. Bring over. We're not trying to take up loads, but I just want a little bit for expansion and contraction on that panel. That'd be good. I'm gonna put the plane back on the wall just to declutter. I think for a minute that can go.
Our panel drops in, push it down. Base one to there. So I'm really looking at is this, is this all going to fit together with the panel in? Put a clamp just in the centre just to check. A little bit down there, let's see what happens there. It might be a bit wide there. No, that jumped in, that's good. Tight fitting joint. A little bit on the front, so let's just see if that panel's squeezed in or do we need a tiny bit more. We'll squeeze up. Bit firm, all right, so I'm a little bit of a gap just here, so it's suggesting that panel's just a fraction wide. So we've got to take it apart, do another task as well now, but we're also, when we take it apart, I know I can take a tiny bit just off the sides again. Exactly the same as we've done, we can adjust that panel. So let's take it apart. Because now we want to cut our shape on the band saw. So we're going to set that up and then we'll get you back in. So with the band saw set up, we're going to use the circle cut jig we used the other week. We'll put a couple of blocks on in line with the blade. up. basically dish the front a little bit. So what I'm aiming to try and do is use something as a guide block that will run on those two blocks and we'll move along. So hopefully we can make this a nice repeatable cut, quicker and easier than doing it freehand. So all we've done for the jig is some way to load the workpiece, so let's do that. Have a look. Got to make sure we've got the bottom at the base end down here. Nothing worse than getting this wrong now. So that's going to go into here. That way up. We want to hold it, stop things moving about too much, and it comes right back against the stop block down on the end. Clamp it up. This stage I can just do test bit where I can get into, check we're going to clear. I know I've got to move the clamp, so we've got to do that bit when we get going. We have quarter inch blade, three or four TPI, four TPI. You could be a little bit wider. This is cutting quite nice. So we're going to turn the air and the extractor on. Blade on. So I can make contact with the template. So just don't do nice slow feed is important. So hopefully we've got we know we've got a surface we're gonna to have to clean up on. It actually follows our curve nice and equally. No real bumps, a little bit just at the end where we're coming out, but nice and easy curve to clean up. Nice and square. Feed slowly. This is four inch oak, it's gonna take a little bit of cutting. Gonna do exactly the same on the other. So with the two boards we've just cut, quite interesting to do using the guide system. Takes a little bit more concentration, I have to feed slowly because this is four inch oak, it's not going to cut quickly. 
how equal do things come out? Now, if I drew this on and tried to cut them freehand, a lot more hand movement, I'd struggle to get the accuracy. This is quite amazing because I take that off. These, nice and equal as a pair. All right, so everything pretty much identical. Got a little bit cleaning up to lose the bandsaw curve, but that's gonna take less effort to clean up than if I'd done them freehand. So quite a good result on that, and like I say, something I've never tried to do. So just something of the plywood jig with the shape former on the edge. All right, so that plywood former, we've got our edge shape to the curb. We want longer than you need, so when that's dropped in, that follows the two little fingers on the bandsaw that we screwed onto that circle cut jig. Real good way of working, and safer to do. Single one grip clamp, good to do because you can undo it easily without having to twist anything. All right, so at that stage, really, the next bit we've got to do, let's lose that jig. I've got to clean up the surface of these with a spoke shave. So put it back together dry. We've used the offcuts of the sides lined up with where we've got them on here, just to the clamping blocks. So I'm going to hold on to those because they're good to create it back to square instead of pushing against that shape. So they're just clamped on. Got a clamp on the bottom. We've got our panel in. We now need to do, and I've done one, got two of these to do, a little inset door that will go into here, lift up, drop back down. This is the back. So this will have something as a pull, but this allows us access into the back. So that's why the grooves were slightly different depths, so we can go up and back down. I'm going to do exactly the same for the one in here. So we've got the next bit of board. And really, this is just a case of playing around with that shooting board set up again. I cut it, plane it off square. Lengthwise, I am marking from the top of the groove when this is inserted. Cut it level here. That's got enough drop because you've got three mil with a groove on the top, six mil. Or three mil here, six mil on the top. So it allows it to lift up and down and nice and accurately planed in to fit the sides. Hence the fact I've clamped it together. So get that pressure. Okay, so I'm going to do both of those. And then the last thing we're going to look at is the top. So we've got a slight chamfered edge which allows this to fit in easier. So we're just going to flip it round. So almost curving that top corner off. Put it back in. Just fits into the width. My masking tape will stick a bit better. Just give me something to hold. Check where it goes into there. Won't quite drop down yet, so we need to do exactly the same as we've just done. Take a little bit off the bottom corner. Either side, just really soften that corner edge. Back one on the front edge. I'm going to take a little bit more off to give it that angle approach to fit in. And that should just about fit in there nearly. Fiddly to get in and out. That's better. Again, softening the corners just to allow it to fit in and drop down. So hopefully now, if I turn it up on edge, let's put that one back out as well. These will drop in, lift up, can be removable so we can get to change the battery. Drop it in. Bottom one, we can do the same. We can lift it up, take it out, get your five pound note back out. Or hide whatever you want in there. So that does our back. So we've got carcass bit put together. We've done the backs, we've inserted those, flip it round. We've got our front panel we're going to do the cutout with. We've got our clock bit still to do. We need a top. Oh my god. So, oh, okay. So, got a piece of oak. It's larger than I want. I've cut it to length, but width wise, it's over. I can always adjust it, okay? Um, why leave it over width if I get any breakout or tear out on the back edge or the face edge going down the grain? Not going to be a problem. We can trim it off. If we cut it exactly to size, I've got no movement to alter the width. 
So at this stage it's allowing me to do a few things. I also want to cut off, and I'm hoping we can see, I've drawn on here a diagonal, okay? I want to trim that. So if I just flip it over, you can see the diagonal coming up. I want to trim that angle. A few of you are going to say, uh, we could do circular saw. I can't get that angle on my circular saw and I cannot legally stand this up and pass it over without a crown guard or the riving knife on. So, can't do that. I could go bigger router cutter, but I doubt I can match that angle and it won't fit the little table we've used. So I'm trying to keep this quite basic. So, how would they have done this in the old fashioned days? Before we had all these fancy things, well, we could have our angle drawn on. I've made a corresponding block of wood which I've planed down to the angle, so actually if I bring the two of these together, I'm not going to be able to hold it very easy, I'd actually create a right angle. Okay, I can do it down that face a little bit, you can see we follow our line, hopefully. Right, so I've got myself something as a guide block to run off. Next thing we're going to do, clamp it down on the bench. Okay, we've got a line coming across the top. I'm going to put that in there. Next thing, we've got to find the glasses. They've got to go back on. We want to clamp. Now I've got a stop block be something to push up against. Just lining up with that line as a temporary thing. I'm looking at where I've got to get a clamp on, so I've got to come to me a little bit. We've got to do both ends. Our clamp can go on there. Just check it square for a minute. We've got the main bit of the handle and underneath. If I come to the back edge of our block and find an adjustment tool. This is saying a little bit there. That's good, square it up. I'm on my pencil line, fantastic. Tighten it up, lock it down. That's gonna give me something we can run across to create a square. So in this case, I'm gonna go large shoulder plane. I can rest this on here, create our angle. So fingertips pushing either side, I'm trying to get my hands out of the way so you can see a little bit with the camera. Maybe I can work left-handed, I can push across. We're going to start just to cut our angle. It's going to take a little bit of time, but we're soon going to knock this off. I'm going to... So we've got our two chamfered edges. Just going to clean up the front face just to get rid of any breakout on here. Just checking what we've got, a little bit still there. Going. Back it back a little bit. So at this stage, put it together, we've got our top loose at the moment, that'll get fixed on to the top bit inside. That's on there, just clamped it together to hold it. We've got our bit of brass in, we've got our wooden panel in behind there, the other bit of brass. So when we cut through the wooden panel here, which Ben's gonna do, that'll give us an effect in behind, you'll see that brass work. We've got to do something as the clock face on here, but the clock mechanism, it's gotta be fixed, so that'll go in. So Ben's gonna work out that bit. So at this stage, I can't do a lot else. So in reality, I'm going to give it to Ben. He can do his bits. Then we're going to put it finally together, get it all complete. So hopefully you've enjoyed this bit up to there. Quite a lot of work for a little clock, but something quite fun to do. All right, Lots of hand tool work. Try to bounce off different ideas for you. We'll see you when it's finished.